Okay, hi there guys, I am Bill and this is Animal Crossing New Horizons and today I'm going to show you how to get a 5 star rating on your island. So this is going to be a little guide on that subject matter and I got my 5 star island rating last week and the furniture is still in the same places etc. So I can show you what I have over here but we're also going to talk about the general placements and stuff. This demo square up there is not part of the furniture usually, but I'm going to show you a couple of things with the furniture with this. But yeah, we have information from the official guide as well, all kinds of numbers. I have I have counted how much I have of each thing here, furniture, trees, flowers, fences, etc, etc. And we get into how the game is actually scoring this five star island rating so very good information and how to get this easily as well you don't need expensive items to get this rating so that's what we're gonna do and why would you want to have this five star rating because you can get your hands on this golden watering can and then you can start making some golden roses very cool and also you can get this symbol of a five star island which is the lily of the valley this special flower that will appear on your island when you have a 5 star rating. And of course, huge bragging rights that, hey, I am the island master because you were able to get this 5 star rating. It's a big milestone in the game, just like getting an S rank house and paying all your loans off. So definitely worth doing, guys. So what are we going to cover in this video? We have different sections starting with the prerequisites like how many villagers you need and then we have two main sections that give you points the development and scenery which deals with these civic buildings and also your furniture bridges etc and then we have the other one the nature and landscape which deals with the trees and flowers and both of those have their own point totals that you need to get to in order to get a five star rating and then we also have two different uh, negative possible options which are littering and cluttering so if you're doing either of those then that can hinder your chance to get a five star rating so that's gonna be the basic uh, breakdown for this video so let's get started then shall we hell yeah so the first section is going to be the prerequisites and that's going to be the amount of villagers and you need nine villagers to get a five star rating and I have currently 10 but apparently people have been able to get a five star island rating with nine villagers and how do you get these? Well you need to build the campsite like I have up there up on the right and you just build that then when an animal visits, you go talk to them, ask them to stay. They will make you go back to Tom Nook, who's going to give you a housing kit. Then you go and pull up that down. Okay, here's a house. Then you go talk to the animal and there you go. Uh, they're going to move in. And after that, you can go back to Nook and buy more housing kits from him for 10,000 bells each. And then you just plop them down everywhere you want to make like ready houses and after that you can if you see animals at the campsite or you see them at mystery tours like those mystery islands then you can ask them to join your town so that's how you get those nine to ten villagers at your place and then we get to the first actual area that is gonna be scored and that is the development and scenery. Isabel can be talking about both development and scenery, but they are both going to be counting towards the same score pool. You need 665 points or more to ace this development and scenery section. And you are going to get points, 15 points for having the museum building like we have here. This is 15 points. And then if you have the Nook upgrade, like I'm, it's currently upgrading my Nook store, so probably doesn't count yet. 
but if you have the upgraded nook store you're gonna get another 15 points and then if you have the tailor the able sister store then that is gonna give you another 15 points okay so just having these basic stores or their upgrades is gonna give you a little, little bit of points and then bridges and inclines each bridge you build like here is gonna give you 15 points I have three of these three bridges and I have four inclines so each one of these is gonna give me 15 points so if you really want to have as the least amount of furniture you can in your island you want to build as many of these bridges and inclines like one of these is the same as having 15 pieces of furniture on the ground furniture normally gives you one point so if you put one of these down that's 15 pieces of furniture so if you really want to minimize the amount of furniture then put down these inclines and bridges but if you don't want to put them down then you don't have to either so that's how this section works and all of these are called development but they count to the same pool as scenery and what is scenery scenery can be uh, furniture and fencing let's tackle fencing first so you can get these development and scenery points with fencing but you need five pieces you need five freaking pieces of fencing to get one point okay so if we put five pieces of fencing over here we get one point there's probably about 20 around this house over here so that's four points and look how many squares it takes it takes 20 freaking squares to give us four points whereas if we just put furniture around this house we would be getting 20 points at least probably more so fencing is really not that good of an option to getting these uh, scenery points but you should you should use it for design like here I have fencing going around and this is for design okay it's giving me a few extra points but I just wanted to put it here because it looks nice so even if Isabel's talking to you and saying oh you need you need more scenery and you need more fencing then you don't have to put fencing down because it counts to the same pool as the furniture so and I have 583 pieces of fencing uh, quite a lot okay but it gives me 117 points so it only gives you one-fifth of the amount of fencing you have so go for furniture instead if you really want to have points and then we get to the furniture and this is what is going to give you the points so each piece that you put down here gives you one point one point one point one point one point and if it's expensive over 2000 bells is gonna give you two points this one seems to give two points it's a nook miles item and if it's really expensive over 20,000 bells it gives you uh, three points in total and if it's an outdoors item that is meant to be outside which can be hard to tell that what is the game counting as outside items then that is gonna give you half an extra point as well so this garden garden tap over here is probably an outside item outdoor item I know this hammock is this garden gnome probably too but this hammock definitely seems to be an outside item it gives one and a half point this gumball machine gives two because it costs over 2,000 bells this drink machine nook miles item seems to give two points as well so if you have these little more expensive items then they can give you extra points so this is basically the same as having two basic basic pieces of furniture out here okay and these ones give two points again they're pricey etc but here is the real kicker with furniture that you can put down almost everything and anything on the freaking ground guys this is just gonna be some iron let's see what it is oh pan flute but I got it already okay whatever so you can put down almost everything and the game counts it as furniture it counts it as scenery so what we have here we have accessories 
like glasses. We have freaking white butterflies. If we put down this white butterfly, it says place item and this is the key. If it says place item, the game now counts this as furniture, as scenery. That's one point. So each one of these that I have put down here are one point at least. And if they cost more than 2000 bells, they give you two points. If they are over 20,000 uh, bells, they give you three points. If they're outdoor items like this camp stove and this grill probably, they give you half an extra point. So you should just put down everything you have. Like how I got mine, I, I did like a design route. I didn't know about this. So I just put stuff that I wanted to put out here. I have some of these Nook Miles items that are like more expensive, but you don't need to have them. You don't need to have a wave breaker. This Stonehenge I just found somewhere. You don't need to have, this cost 4,000 Nook Miles, yet it gives two freaking points. The same that we could get from putting two butterflies on the ground. So you don't need to have expensive items at all. This one is probably outdoor item as well, so it should give half an extra point. And if it costs over 2000, then it should give us an extra point. So that's how it works. And you can check this at any time from the Nook shopping. You go over here. Let's see the lawnmower. Okay, it cost 2,900. There's three variations currently that I have. So if I put one of these lawnmowers out, I should get half an extra point and then one extra point because it's over 2,000. So you could just look at your catalog. This Nintendo Switch should give you two extra points because it's over 20,000 in price. Okay, Mrs. Flamingo, this one gives extra point. Miss, Mr. Flamingo, extra point. Mountain bike, probably outdoor item. You'd think these are outdoor items as well. So you could just look at your catalog and see what is over 2000. Studio Spotlight, there you go. Extra point, extra point. Tankless toilet, which is pretty gross. Tape deck, tatami bed, etc., etc. Telescope, there you go. Throwback dino screen. A lot of extra points to be had, if you want, but you don't have to have those items either. You can just put uh, store items, you can put nook items, you can put crafted items, you can put accessories, you can put freaking clothing, you can put fish and bugs and fossils and everything possible just on the ground and the game counts this as furniture scenery points, okay? I took out the lighthouse, which seems to be like maybe three and a half points. And I put down three pairs of these shoes and one butterfly. And I got the rating back to four stars, or sorry, five stars. So there you go. Same thing over here that if I, if I took out like this gumball machine and this drink machine, my rating would go down to four stars, but if I put two yellow butterflies here and two ye yellow butterflies here, I would get it back to five stars. So you don't need to have fancy furniture. If you don't mo have money, it doesn't matter. If you just want to get five stars, then get an area and start putting down as much furniture as you can. Everything you have in your closet and then just catch uh, more bugs, catch more fish and like some of these, like these boxes, you can put stuff on top of them as well. So you should you should just like put a lot of stuff in these kinds of clusters. And the only only uh, caveat here is that the game can count if you have too many inside these specific squares. It divides this map. Like if we look at the map square where we are right now, we are at E four okay we're at e4 so each of these map squares is divided into four so this is i marked it on the on the ground so this is this is one area that the game considers to be a block every map square is divided into four and this is one of those blocks so the game is counting how many pieces of furniture are inside here and if 45 or more squares inside this are taken 
then the game considers this to be cluttered. So that's the only caveat. But if you put this in like two, two times six or two times seven, then leave one space on e each side and then continue like here, you would continue another six or seven here. Then two times six or two times seven, uh, that is fine. One space on each side and then you, you will not clutter up anything. If you do 2 by 8 then you can already start cluttering up. That would be 48 squares covered if you put them really tightly and they are on these blocks. So just consider that, that you need to leave some space around these and have like 2 times 7 or 2 times 6 blocks going on. And you can also get a little bonus points going on if you have this kind of block and you would have 11 or more different pieces of furniture inside there, then the game is going to give you some extra points. But you shouldn't worry about that, because if you put 12 different items here, you're going to get 15 points. So that's only 3 extra points. And you need to have 11 totally different pieces of furniture there. So I would just put whatever you have, just start amassing this stuff, Wherever you have free space, then just start putting it. You don't need to worry about these blocks and where they are and whatever. As long as you don't clutter, have 45 or more inside of a square, inside of this little block, then you're going to be absolutely fine. And this one here, pan flute, you cannot put it down. You can only drop it and this would be littering. So don't do that. But if you can place it, then there you go. This is one point, one point, this is expensive, this is two points, one point, one point, two points, this is one point at least. So just whatever you want to put down, if you want to design it, or you, you want to like freaking just lay down a giant pile of stuff, you can do that. You could have all sea bass in your island, all your furniture be sea bass, you should be technically be able to get a freaking scenery score with that as well, if you have enough. The only problem with sea bass is that it takes two squares and I think it only gives you one point. So, not the most, you know, cost effective way. But this one here probably gives you two points, this one gives you at least one point, etc. So just lay down as much furniture as you can, that's the best way to get this scenery score up. And how much furniture do I have currently going on in this town? I have 179 pieces of furniture in this town. And that is counting the uh, Nook Miles items, that is counting uh, the store items, the crafted items. I don't really have, like normally I would not have bugs or fish or anything like that. But 179 pieces of furniture. So you really need to lay down the furniture, whatever it is, fish bugs, fossils, freaking cardboard boxes, or whatever you have, then that's probably the, the point that people are going to be stumbling upon. You can get the nature section done pretty easily, but this scenery section, because you need 665 points. So yeah, I have currently 179 pieces of furniture here, three bridges four inclines and 583 pieces of fencing. And I do have some of these more expensive items, so I'm getting double points for this furniture. That's that's how it works for me, but yeah, you can just put down any sort of super cheap furniture uh, down, or even bugs, basic butterflies, if you want. So just go for it, pepper the whole place with freaking furniture and place items everywhere. And then we get to the second big section, which is the nature and landscape. And that one requires you to get 450 points or more. And how do you get these points? Well, trees and flowers. As you can see here, I have a lot of trees going on. I should probably cull some of these. I have 210 trees currently. And the game will give you one nature point for each grown tree you have. It can be coconut, it can be fruit, it can be hardwood, cedar, bamboo, money tree, 
any tree that is grown up will give you one uh, nature point, but only up to 190, okay? So if you want to stop at 190, you can. If you want to have extra trees, that's fine, but they will not give you any more nature points. And if you have 220 trees or more, then the game is actually going to consider your town to be rural. It's too rural, Isabel says, so you cannot have 220 trees or more. So you, you need to stop. I stopped previously, when I first got the 5 star rating, I had 215 trees. And then I culled down a few to 210. So that is all the trees that are in place, and then I have some room for a few money trees. So that's what you want to do. You want to leave a little space for the money trees. Um, if you want to go closer to the max amount. So you can get 190 points just from the trees. So that's what you should have absolutely do. And then we get to the second one, which is the flowers. You can get points from flowers as well. But with the flowers, there is no maximum amount. So you can have as many flowers as you freaking want. And you probably should. Trying to get some of these hybrid ones is really fun. And currently I have over 700 freaking flowers going on here. So that means 700 nature points. So what was the freaking requirement again for nature? 450 points. Well, I got over 700 points from these flowers alone. So you can get through this absolutely just with flowers or it, sh it, it should be possible. I have not tested that because I don't want to cut all my trees down, but either with the trees and flowers or just flowers, you should be able um, to get through this nature score pretty easily. No problem at all. So, and you can buy these flowers every day from the store. You can buy as many as you want. You plant them down and even the freaking sprouts that you put down. If you, if you plant some flowers on the ground, the sprouts already give you half a point. And then when they, they are in the other two phases growing up, they give you 1.7 for each flower that is growing up. And then a full, fully grown flower gives you one point. So even if you just put a ton of flowers on the ground, you're already getting points. So buy a lot of flowers and put them on the ground and water them and have your visitors water them and there you go. Point, 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 point. This is a field of points going on here. So that's how you ace the nature section. No problem at all. And you can get nature points from crafted furniture, okay? So this one here is a crafted furniture, it's a well. And if you have crafted furniture that takes like uh, three squares in any direction, like this one, this bamboo noodle slide, this one takes three times one squares or tiles. This one gives you one extra point. So if it's like three dimensions to any, any side, it's going to give you extra points, like one extra point. But other than that, these crafted furniture really only give you quarter of a point. So you need four to get one point, unless you're again looking at the freaking blocks on the map. Where are we? We're in square C2. So there's like a block going on here somewhere. And if you have 11 or more unique uh, crafted items, then you're going to get full points. But you would have to see where the freaking blocks are on the map and it's just a pain. You don't need to do that. Just grow a lot of trees, 190 trees and then, well, 260 flowers and there you go. You're done. Freaking max 450 uh, nature points done. So trees and flowers rule this nature section. Absolutely. So if you're crafting crafting uh, furniture, then I mean those are giving you scenery points as well. So you should focus on that, getting the scenery stuff done, because that is harder to do. Absolutely. 
So there we go. Those are the two main score sections in this 5 star island rating. But there are still two negative ones that can sabotage your rating if you're not careful. And the first one is littering. So if you're dropping stuff down, like this one over here. This is now considered to be trash. It is dropped on the ground. Same thing here, drop item. This one is now trash. It was furniture before and now it's trash. So do not drop stuff on the ground like this. If you have 15 or more stuff dropped like that, and now it's considered to be furniture by the way. There you go. So if you have 15 or more items dropped like that on the ground, then the game is going to consider your island to be messy. And that's going to stop you from getting any sort of good rating. So if you have stuff on the ground, then pick it up. Same thing if you are like freaking shaking the trees. Now the, now the fruit are on the ground. You made these fruit drop on the ground, so you need to pick them up. They don't drop there by themselves, so anything you drop on the ground, then pick it up. And if you have extra stuff, whatever, you can always go go to a trash can and just put them into the trash can. It's, it's gonna like take care of them. You'll never see those items again. So don't litter and you don't need to worry about these uh, seashells or the branches that are naturally on the ground or the little rocks that would appear next to these big rocks like this one here. I did not put this rock or this stone piece down here. This is not something that I dropped here so that's fine. And same thing with the star fragments going on that they might appear on the shore if you see a shooting star in the sky then those are all fine. But if you're dropping stuff on the ground, then you need to pick it up. Do not litter. But Isabel's gonna tell you if you have a messy problem, so that's fine. And then to the other problem area, which is cluttering. And we already touched on that in the furniture section a little bit. So let's recap. The game is looking at the map in these squares, in these blocks of 8x8. And if you, this has 64 spaces, the frame is included, so 64 tiles. And if you cover up 45 of these tiles in a square or in a block, then the game is going to consider you to be cluttering the island. So if you're putting furniture down in these sort of really tight rows, then just leave some space in there and that's gonna take care of the clutter problem. Well, there we go, that works. And yeah, if you can put stuff on top of these containers, then take, take advantage of that. Because you still have three spaces here to move, right? That is, that is, even though you have two furniture here, then that's not blocking the ground. This is still totally open. So like I said, if you wanna do this really tight furniture formation, then use this two times six or two times seven groups. And that's gonna, two times seven group, even if you packed it real tight, it's gonna have 42 uh, squares covered. You're, so you're still safe. As long as you have one extra space on either side of these groups, you could have two times seven groups really tightly packed throughout your island and you still shouldn't be cluttering at all. So that's how that works. Do not fill up each square, like make a giant garbage dump so you can't walk around these clusters. That's why I would put this like this, one row here and then another row on the back side. So you can still interact with these items. Same as when you're putting stuff inside your house, you should be able to interact with every piece of furniture you put in the freaking house, but also outside the same thing. So leave room and stack them like back to back if you want. So that's the clutter. Okay, so that was that guys. How to get a five star island rating. 
And to recap, get 9 to 10 villagers, build the museum, build the, get the nook upgrade, build the able sisters store, build as many bridges and inclines as you can or you want, put down fencing, but more importantly, put down a lot of furniture. Put down everything you have, storeboard items, nook miles items, crafted furniture, fish, bugs, fossils, clothing, anything that has the place item command, just put it down on the ground and it's gonna give you at least one point. It's gonna give you two points if it's expensive, and if it's really expensive it can give you three points and half an extra point if it's also an outdoors item. And if you cluster 11 or more unique pieces of furniture together, then you're also gonna get some other extra points, but I wouldn't worry about that. Just put down as many items on the ground as possible. And for the nature section, plant at least 190 trees and then put 260 flowers on the ground. They all give you one point each. So that's how you're gonna get through the nature section pretty easily or just have 500 flowers and that should do it as well. And don't litter, pick up everything that's on the ground and also leave some room when you're putting down furniture. So that should do it. So thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below in the comment section if you have other information. Uh, easier methods to do this then leave that in the comment section below as well I will be putting a link to the Animal Crossing wiki to the description and also putting some of this information in the description box as well but yeah thanks for watching if you like this video and you thought this was helpful then do feel free to press the like button that's gonna help me to see that okay you like this content and it's also gonna let YouTube know that this content was useful to you so I appreciate that greatly and also if you want to subscribe then feel free to do that as well but thanks for watching and have fun with your own islands hope you can get your five star ratings and why you should be able to get that with these tips absolutely and see you again next time take care bye bye Hooray!